time to finish the game. Let's go. Ball, first and 10 at the 12-yard line of the Seahawks. Sean goes right, has a cutback lane, and he does. He's across the 20, the 25, 30, 35, 40. Here he goes. Are they going to catch him? 40, 35, 30, 25, 10, 5. Touchdown, Seahawks. What a run by Sean Alexander. Finish the game. We're going to finish the game. What's happening, everybody? This is Sean Alexander. You hear the music? Yes, sir. You know what that means. My man on the plan is in the booth, Claude Jennings. <laughs> you are game. listening to Finish yes, the sir. Game. Yes, sir. We're so pumped about today. A great show. Got a great special guest. And uh, today's about leadership and fatherhood and the whole nine. Cloud, what do you think, man? Well, look, well, first of all, speaking about about finishing the game, I mean, you know, this will mark the first weekend of many that football <laughs> is back. People. Bing, bing, football bing. Football is back. Now, I'm one of those guys. I don't care whether it's preseason. I mean, I used to get, you know, juiced up as a kid watching the Redskins scrimmage the Steelers, you know, in Carlisle, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I don't, you know, preseason, whatever, don't matter to me. But, yeah, this weekend – August 7th, 8 p.m., the Green Bay Packers, the Indianapolis Colts for the uh, NFL Hall of Fame game. Uh, you talk about finishing the game. Here's some guys who are being celebrated for finishing the game. Uh, the 2016 class of the NFL Hall of Fame. Brett Favre, Woo! Marvin Harrison, Hard. Tony Dungy, a the great coach. guy, by the way. Yes. Kevin Green, Orlando Pace, Big O, Eddie uh, DeBarlo Jr., Kenny Stabler. The snake, the yeah. hammer, road tide. And Dick Stanfield. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's that uh, 2016 Hall of Fame class of the NFL uh, inductees. And Sean. What's up, man? You ain't on this list, man. <laughs> What's up with that? I don't, I don't know. Like, I, maybe I'm on the back side of this list. You know, well, maybe one day. I, I don't, I don't know. You know what? I, I do know this. I'm, I'm always excited about football season. This is always a great time of year. My, my little nephew, Austin, uh, JR, Maximus and Maddox, they all, um, are on the little AAU basketball team okay. together, but they finally come together to play a little football. Yeah, I saw we go. my my brother sent me pictures of of little Austin playing football, and she said uh, his wa- as his wife, my my sister in law said, "Hey, what's up, Heather?" Um, said. I don't know how many tackles he had, but he blocked a punt and he tackled everybody. I said, "That's right, it's football time." It's football time. That's, that's it. So that's, we're happy about that's that. That's when mamas man. learn more than ever. Oh, he hit that person so hard. Is that mouthpiece supposed to fly out like that? Yes, it is, Mama. Yes, it is. You're listening to finish the game with Sean Alexander. I'm Claude Jennings, and in studio we have another very special guest to the finish the game podcast. Woo-woo. Sean, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a little bit of time to run down this this uh, list. Rally it down. He's got the best. Thirteen seasons in the NFL. 13. Holds Seattle Seahawks single season franchise records for reception set it in 2007. Uh, also now the uh, wide receiver coach with the Baltimore Ravens. If you don't mind, I just want to go go back to a little bit of college. Keep on going. Go back. Played on the 1994 undefeated Penn State team. Played for might be an understatement. He led the team that uh, undefeated 1994 team. Uh, Penn State all time leader in yards and touchdowns. Three time uh, first team All Big Ten. Three time AP All American. Won the first ever Blitnikoff award in 1994 and citrus bowl mvp in 1994 as well we're talking about your guy and That's if you look right. on facebook i've got this picture of mr bobby ingram running off the field woo, woo. off of what looks like a touchdown and you're sitting there all jacked up sean ready to dap him uh, off the field mr ingram thank you so much for joining us on uh finish the game oh man i appreciate y'all having me and uh yeah sean's my boy man so i'm honored <laughs> to be on the program bobby you know we love you man it's It's so exciting anytime I get to hear your voice, man. You were such a a great leader um, to me and to that whole locker room about what a man looks like, how a man goes to work, how a man loves his family and his wife. How's Dee doing? Man, Dee's doing unbelievable. Um, She has a lot going on right now. You know, we had the four kids, and obviously that's a full-time job. Amen. Um, but she, <laughs> she recently got called into a leadership position herself, speaking of leadership. She um, she was in a Bible study program, Bible study fellowship. I'm sure a lot of your listeners are familiar with it, but it's an international Bible study uh, done in 30, 37, 38 countries. Um, but here in the States, you know, she, she was elected to be a teaching leader, which is a really big deal. Yeah. So uh, she's going to have her hands full, and she's going to be in charge of, uh, 54 group leaders under her, which are basically, uh, they facilitate, you know, discussions with women. And they have uh, structured studies, and uh, she's going to have her work cut out for her, uh, you know, teaching the book of John, but she's excited about it. And you're in Baltimore, right? 
Yeah, we're in Baltimore. I got like six people. I'm gonna send to you right away. <laughs> my boys will be like, "Hey, can you send my wife? Hey, I need to hey, go to Deanna. She got them." I, I know that's right, man. You know D, man. She may be small, but she's feisty. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna put up a fight. Hey, so uh, tell me yeah. about Baltimore, man. How's it being the wide receiver coach for the Baltimore Ravens? You know, it's been amazing. Uh, God has, has blessed me, you know, and I believe that coaching has been uh, a calling and not a career. You know, I love the X's and O's and I love football and to be doing it with one of the very best organizations uh, with the Ravens. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fortunate and I'm very blessed in uh, the type of men that are in this building from the top down, our, our owner Steve, uh, you know, Ozzy and John. And you talk about men of character, men of integrity, and, and men that are truly leaders. You know, I've learned a tremendous amount about life and about men um, in these last three years. And, and at, at the same time, learning a bit of X's and O's as well. But we love Baltimore. The kids are thriving. They absolutely love it. And it's been a, a much welcome change for me uh, in my career, but more importantly for my family in the type of area that this is. No, that's great, Bobby. I mean, you've always put, put family first. How old are your kids now? Wow, Bobby is 18, believe it wow, or not. Wow, Jesus. Hey, you yeah, know what? Are we allowed to carry guns in D.C.? Store. Yeah, hey, hey, just, look, Uncle Sean got you. I already know. Man. Come up here. We got some guys ready. But she uh, she turned 18 in June. Wow. We went down to Ocean City. You know, we had some of her, her, her little girlfriends. We took them down there for four or five days. My wife, it was just me and my wife and, and four girls, man. So I was... I was I was the lone wolf there. <laughs> right. But she's doing, I and everybody. You mad dog and everybody at the beach. Man. I already know you. <laughs> what you want? <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, you know, she's getting ready to go to college, man. So wow. that's a huge step in her life. But mm-hmm. a tremendous young woman and doing things right and getting good grades and helping mom and, and, and all of the things that you want. Dean, yeah. my son Dean, uh, Dean is 16. Dean's playing football in D.C. He goes to Gonzaga. He played as a true freshman on the varsity, so Dad's proud of that. Yeah, no but doubt. More importantly, he has the work ethic, and it's a, it's a tough school. It's very challenging academically as well as uh, athletically, and he, he stepped up, man, so I'm proud of him, and he's he's matured into a little young man. Voice probably deeper than mine right now, Sean. I was about to say, you know, he, I remember him catching passes in the locker room. Everybody was like, man, where's he going next? Hey, so have we sent him a letter from Alabama? I'm just saying, have we sent him the letter yet? You have not, but he got uh, about five or six offers on the table. Oh, so sweet might Jesus. Want to make a call down uh, man, he co- jumped in the fray in some other schools, you know, but uh, Coach man, Saban, he, I'm he, just saying, we got the inside <laughs> right. You know what I mean? We got the Next to Mari Cooper up in Baltimore. Man, he's, he's a good kid, man. So I'm proud of him. Trey is 11, and as wow. we speak, he's down in Houston with D. He's running in the Junior Olympics in the one, the two. Wow. Um, so, you know, that's going to be a great experience for him. And Phoebe, mm-hmm. Phoebe, our five year old, her namesake, <laughs> you know, she is directly named after Phoebe in the Bible. And, you know, if you're going to deliver a letter, a letter for Paul, that you're tough. And right. <laughs> my, Phoebe, my Phoebe is, she takes, she is her namesake. She is a tough. Uh, smart, funny, mm-hmm. you know, witty five-year-old that we love every day. She keeps us cracking up, laughing, man. So my family is is my heart. They, uh, they, everybody's doing well. They're healthy. They love it here, and they, we've been blessed, man. We've been truly blessed by this move. While you're listening to the Finish the Game podcast, I'm Claude Jennings. He's Sean Alexander. Our special guest today is Bobby Ingram, a wide receiver coach with the Baltimore Ravens. Bobby, you talked about, uh, you know, being a player and being coached, and then you transitioned to being a coach. And then you talked about how much you even you learn as a coach while you're in the Baltimore Ravens organization. What is it about great people and leaders that they remain teachable at every layer, area and in every part of life that, you know, we're never too smart to right. you know, stop learning? Yeah, I, I think that's just, uh, you know, with these guys, there's a, a certain level of humili- humility that's so authentic, um, you know, and, and I think that they just genuinely love people, love good men, mm-hmm. and they love developing other leaders. And to me, that's the biggest thing that I've learned about leaders. They don't have a huge ego. They are very confident in who they are and what they know. But, you know, if you're a true leader, then you're trying to build other leaders. And if you're trying to do that, then you're not worried about, somebody coming and taking your spot you know i'm just worried about doing the very best job that i can here and i love you know grabbing the guy in my room taking him to church and sitting down having a meal you know guys are having babies guys are getting married guys are going through struggles you know it's at you see the game but you're talking about finishing the game once the game is finished there's real life that has to be played that's wow. right wow wow that's so true and so many times we don't get to see anything 
beyond the field. I mean, we sit back, we watch the games on Sunday, we play fantasy football. We, you know, we mad because you only got one touchdown instead of two. Right. Uh, but there's <laughs> real life that happens with these guys. And I imagine part of coaching, I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but it's not just coaching on the field. I mean, it's coaching off the field and, 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 and trying to help these guys, you know, through life. Like you said, getting married, having babies, all that stuff. Yeah, and it, it is real life, you know, and I certainly don't have it all figured out by any stretch of the imagination. But again, I think a sign of leadership is being able to pass on some of the wisdom, some of the lessons that you have learned uh, the hard way. Some of the tough lessons that I had to learn, some of the things that I went through, uh, even some of the great experiences that I have, I think just, you know, talking to these guys and modeling that for these guys is huge. Um, you know, and, and just building that relationship to the point where, you know, you're holding them accountable, but at the same time, I want them to hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's part of my continued growth. And uh, it's been great. No, nah, that's good, man. You know, I, I, part of leadership is, and part of anything is also knowing how to follow the right people. I think that everybody right. says, right. I want to be a man, so I'm not going to follow anybody. And the truth is, we're always going to learn from somebody. That's who you're following. And so, uh, Bobby, I, I just think that, you know, you know, you, Max Strong, there was a handful of you guys that, that I just watched you all. I watched you all as men. I watched you all with your kids, how you did them and, and how you raised them. And, and now I'm watching you as a coach and I'm just, uh, I'm just really proud of you, brother. I think the world of you, as you already know. And, uh, and I just say, man, keep on going, man. Um, I always like to ask people some shotgun questions, you know, and so I'm going to rattle them off on you for you ready to go. I'm ready. I'm ready. But before you say, before we get into the questions, man, you know, just I appreciate those words. But also, I think you had the same impact on myself and Mac. You know, we were the veteran guys, but you came in as a young guy and you were so uh, steadfast and so confident in who you were as a person and what you believed in. And, you know, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to be an older guy to be a leader. And that's one of the things I'm talking to my son about. People yeah. follow leaders that they know are going to be steady. They know are going to be true. They know are going to be the hardest workers. They're not asking them to be perfect, but they're asking you to be the same, you know, to be that same guy every day. And they gonna, they want to know what to expect from you. And, uh, and as far as you, like you said, man, I know you're a huge in mentoring all of these young guys. And for the people that don't know, Sean has been phenomenal. He takes a lot of time, man. People, A lot of people talk about it. But I've truly seen this man grab all of these young men while he was playing and now that he's done and try and model uh, what biblical manhood is and not what our society is saying a man has to be. And, and, and one of the things, Sean, that you said when you were in Seattle, you said, you show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You know, and that always stuck with me. Wow. That's awesome, man. No, man, it's it's good. No, it's, it's kudos. It's a love fest over here. <laughs> Finish the game love fest. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to say, after these rapid-fire questions, I'm going to ask about how Sean was in, in training camp and practice. Because, I mean, you talk about that guy. Yeah, we'll get into that later. Yeah, we'll get into that later. Yeah, we'll get into that later. Practice! But let's go to that, that <laughs> rapid-fire question, Sean. All right. All right, all right, here we go, Bobby. You're going to rapid-fire questions. Your best sports memory. Wow. Um, one of the NFC Championship game, uh, the the the, the – not the game we won the game, but after that, the atmosphere yeah. and, and that feeling of, man, we are going to the Super Bowl and being able to look in your eyes and looking at all my teammates' eyes, mm-hmm. um, that was an unbelievable accomplishment uh, for, for me. That was one of my best sports memories. It was. I remember uh, I passed you the tra- – they gave me the trophy to run around, and I said, where's Bobby? He's got to grab this thing. And I remember grabbing it to you, and you <laughs> took it around. You know, we were the first ones That's to right. hoist that trophy to say we going That's to the right. cup uh, in That's Seattle, right. and now it's an old hand. You know, what I mean, now they do it all the time. They think it's old, but That's right. we had to climb. We had to churn that butter first. You know, it was That's it was right. beautiful. Okay, second question. Um, uh, give me a life shaping memory. Um, uh, a life shaping memory for me is uh, I, uh, it's not a good one, but it's one that I think people can learn from. You know, I, I lost my father mm-hmm. um, due to a tragic car accident. And 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 I didn't uh, handle that loss well, um, you know. So now I just tell people that whenever they go through some adversity, and you know, instead of running away from the Lord, they need to run to the Lord. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. Um, the most inspiring person to you? My dad, growing up, unbelievable mm-hmm. man, great worker, family guy, community guy. I mean, he was that that little league baseball coach that would pick up fifteen kids and put them in a pickup truck. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, every day if he had to grilling out on the grill. So you know, I look back at some of the things I did, and I do. It was all because of him and, and, and what he modeled. Not so much what he said, but what I saw. 
Yeah, no, nah, Bobby. Bobby's from South Carolina. Every cousin lived on the same street. I used to make fun of him all the time, you know. But but I'm from Kentucky. You already know how that works too, you know. So I have about forty first cousins. So That's it all together. <laughs> hey, so tell me, tell us, tell us the world, uh, um, one of your greatest lessons you learned. Wow, one of the greatest lessons I've learned in life, um, yeah. it is really um, to become great. You must serve. Mm. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be great at something. Um, but ambition is good, but when it, when it comes to the point of you, you know, doing things that are out of character or using other people to get to where you want to be, um, I think it, it, it taints it, it taints it, you know, it's, for me, it's, it's, if you want to become great, man, you serve, you take care of other people and you do things, uh, to help others. And then you're going to get exactly where you need to be. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Question number five, give me one life do over. If you had one thing you could wish you could do it over again, I mean, we can't take anything back, but give me one right. life do over. Wow. Ooh, that's a good one, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, one life do over. It was uh, an incident at Penn State that I wish I could do over. As a young guy, man, I ended up, you know, just being frank, young and dumb. I stole some stereo equipment and it was, it could have ruined my life. Yeah. You know, but Joe Paterno, uh, you know, uh, through that, through that, that was around the same time I lost my dad. I was angry. I was mad at the world and just uh, had a rebellious spirit. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I'd never done that, but I know that everything also happens for a reason. So I wish, I wish I'd never done that. Um, uh, so that's one of the things that, you know, you look back and you say, man, I was dumb. I, I wish I wouldn't have did that. Yeah. You know what? For, and we have, we have a great raw, um, wide audience. So there's some great, um, you know, from army generals to, to grandfathers, to young men, to high school boys, to, to young ladies who are, who are big, uh, you know, big Bobby Ingram fans, um, and clear across the board. And, and I guess this message is for everybody, you know, stupid can hit you at any age. Oh man! <laughs> so let's let's make sure that if we think stupid's knocking on the door, that we don't answer it. That's right. You know, and five and five seconds. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like about it. I feel like our society has made it okay to have that one purposely stupid moment, and we're like, no, don't purposely ever be foolish. You know what I mean? Just don't do it on I, purpose. I do because now, and the thing that's different about these these young people that are growing up, you got this social media. Yeah. That, you know, back then it was stupid within one community or if you're an athlete, it may be bigger, but now it's stupid to the world. Yeah. And, uh, and, changes uh, everything. You know, yeah. <laughs> changes everything. All right. Question number six. Uh, if you could give advice to your players, if if if, this, if the whole everybody listening to this show, which is a lot of people, Bobby, if they was your if they was your newest wide receiver, what would be one advice, one one word of wisdom you give them? Uh, and it's something my dad used to say. There's no substitute for hard work. Yeah. Uh, when you when you come in here, if you if you expect to be a Baltimore Raven, you better be prepared to work for it. Mm. That's awesome. Okay, and my last question: uh, Give us your finish the game moment. Give us a moment in your life where you're just like, you know what? I paid the cost. I played the game, and I finished the game. Wow, finishing the game moment. Um, yeah, it, it was. Um, you know, my I was going into my fifteenth year in the league. I played fourteen. Uh, I was going into my 15th year, and I was I was ready to retire. Got a call uh, from Coach Holmgren and Gill because our whole staff had gone from Seattle to Cleveland. Yeah, I um, remember that. Yeah, and then uh, so I was there, and it was it was the third preseason game, and uh, you know I talked to Mike, and they gave me the heads up. They said, you know, Bobby, man, we Coach Mangini, these guys, they want to go in a different direction. Um, you, you're not going to make the team. So we, we just wanted to give you a heads up. You know, they basically like, do you want us to cut you now? You want us to cut you next week? And I said, you know, is, is, um, is if I stay here another week, is it going to keep one of these young guys from making the team? And they said, no, it's not. Why? And I said, because this will probably be my last game in the NFL. And this is the fourth preseason game as a, as a 14th year veteran. Right. And, I, and I'm so. You don't you know, even play. No, y'all don't know. 14 that's games. I've heard of. Yeah. 14, here, 14 years. You don't even play in that game. <laughs> right. Here's the thing. We were playing the Bears. That was the team that drafted me. Right. So it was going. And I knew it was going to be my last game. And I said, you know, Mike, I just want to play. Because I know this will probably be the last time I ever put on an NFL uniform. I know it's only a preseason game. I, there's no ego in that. I said, but I'm going to see some people on that other side that are gonna, that, that were special to me when I came in as a rookie. So I think I finished the game right. Now, it's not as glamorous as winning a Super Bowl, right. obviously, and walking out like I hit it out of the park. But for me, that was the right closure for me and my career and my life. 
you know, I feel like I finished the game right. And I, I became fa- uh, fast friends with Colt McCoy, who was a believer and, you know, was struggling a little bit as a rookie. So it was an opportunity for me to go into a game situation with him and just drop some knowledge on him during the game and to be more of a support for him. And it was about that more than about me going out and playing another a game. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah you know, that's that's humble. I mean, because, I mean, Bobby, I don't know how many how many play, preseason games I even played in. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you, make me, you make me covet <laughs> how, un, how ungood I was. <laughs> you're oh, you're teaching me something right class, now, Bobby. Man. You're teaching me something you know, right now. Now, you know I didn't play in very many of those myself. <laughs> day, so don't, don't give me too much. Don't give me too much, Glory. No, nah, man. I was quick to get me three or four plays. Let me get one series. And my helmet's all of a sudden in the locker room. Give me a hat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Finish the Game podcast with Sean Alexander. I'm Claude Jennings. Our guest is uh, Bobby Ingram, wide receiver coach with the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, so Bobby, before we let you go, um, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, so you've been in training camp with Sean. You've been in these preseason games, these practices. Uh, tell us something about Sean, man, we may not know. Oh, man. Uh, you know what, man? <laughs> just something y'all, funny. I don't know. Something just <laughs> happened in training it's, camp. It's so much comical when y'all hear me. <laughs> yeah. You would almost think Sean. that in September there's a flip that switched. <laughs> <laughs> I don't stop playing something. ball till my birthday, August 30th. <laughs> <laughs> Training camp, Sean was real low key, man. Um, but I tell you this, dude, people people that really didn't get to know Sean on a personal level missed out. This dude is funny. He's a <laughs> he, he's got a great sense of humor, man. And he's always cracking jokes. And when he's around, he, you know, he, he's always laughing, man. So I don't have any crazy stories, man. Sean was real laid back. He, you know, very professional. Um, tried to avoid as many practices as he could, as Hongren would allow him to get away with. Yeah, you thanks, know, Coach Hongren. You allowed me a little bit. But but when the lights came on, you know, guys knew 3-7 was going to be ready to roll, especially when we, in, we hit that red zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 20 yards in, baby. I'm 20 yards in. Bobby, you all the work from the 50. I'm giving it to the 20, Bobby. That was my, my favorite. Everybody asked me what was my favorite play. It was when Bobby was catching the somehow fall around the 15, 10-yard line. <laughs> you know. Hey, Bobby, we love you, man, and we'll catch up with you soon. Uh, y'all stay tuned. This is Finish the Game. Sean, that's another great interview. You know, here's the thing. I mean, we get we get Bobby Ingram on. We had JB on last week. You know, there's a correlation between how these guys give great interviews and great insight, but because they're great people, yeah, that greatness is inside of them. You know, and then when you give them the platform and you tee up some questions for them uh, and and some hard questions. I mean, the stuff that he had as far as the do over. I mean, that's tough stuff to be transparent about. But greatness are in, is in these guys, and then I mean, you just get these great interviews, and man, I mean, Bobby Ingram, oh my goodness, yeah, he's what big time. Guy. Bobby's one of the best that uh, in the game. He's the best on the field, off the field. We we would we'd come in the games, and Matt would say, "Man, just run everybody deep, put Bobby in position to make the play. He's gonna make it," mm-hmm. and uh, and that's what he does. And and I'm sure he's doing that in Baltimore. I mean, I hope. Baltimore has a great, great year. I mean, there's only two teams that I really don't mind them getting beat by. You know, Seahawks, Redskins. You know, there's only two teams. You uh-huh. know, but um, but yeah, no. Nah, but Baltimore just ran by Ozzie Newsome, and he's a Bama guy, and it's just class all the way. So, you know what? We we love you all, you all, and uh, Bobby, keep on going, do what you do, and to everybody else, y'all keep playing and finish the game. Yeah.